experiment ever is set for launch this Wednesday. It's called the Large Hadron Collider, and it's either going to expand our knowledge of the universe or destroy the Earth. But whatever happens, it's going to be exciting. We may never know the secrets behind the Big Bang, but this Wednesday, scientists will attempt to recreate the conditions that followed in hopes of learning more about the building blocks of all things. Deep underground on the border of Switzerland and France, thousands of scientists have spent billions of dollars in the last decade constructing the Large Hadron Collider, which will send two beams of subatomic particles through the circular accelerator until colliding them head on. But skeptics are saying the experiment is too risky that it could create a black hole of its own and result in the end of the world. What good will the Large Hadron Collider bring about? And are we sure that these scientists won't destroy us all when they flip that switch? Splitting atoms, it's the loop. Okay, well, a black hole is gravity. That's the thing to remember. You know, black hole is all this gravity condensed into one spot. You can't get that by colliding the particles. Make sense of it all. Staff writer for Wired.com, covering the energy, science, and technology beat. It's Alexis Madrigal. Welcome. Great to see you. Hey, thanks, Chris. Appreciate now, uh, of course, everyone knows a hadron is what? Uh, the collection of quarks. But let's talk for a minute about what the uh, Large Hadron Collider does. Right. So what the Large Hadron Collider does is actually, uh, it's an atom snapshot. You say hadron, I say hadron. I mean, you know. Uh, and so, and, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an uh, atom smasher. Essentially, it's a series of tubes, uh, really, actually, very genuinely, that speed up particles to near the speed of light and then they're actually uh, aimed at each other, so they explode, uh, basically within a kind of cathedral that has a detector in it. Right, so this actually, and this is not some small experiment combined, uh, confined to a lab. I actually visited Fermilab a couple months ago, which was previously the largest uh, particle collider, and then, you know, moved over for, for this one at CERN, but just how enormous is the LHC? I mean, it's huge. Uh, the actual circumference of the, the circle is about 17 miles. And the detectors are enormous. I mean, you could fit, like, big chunks of actual, sort of like the cathedral of uh, Notre Dame, like, inside the largest detector, which is the Atlas. Now, these things are incredibly expensive. I know I read, uh, last year I read Leon Letter, The God Particle, which was written in 92, and I know they were talking about building a super new conducting super collider in the United States in Texas, but they said the cost was just so prohibitive that they never got around to doing it. How much did it spend on the LHC and Cer at CERN? We're talking $10 billion, mostly funded by the Europeans, actually. The U.S. has had kind of a small role, but after the failure of the superconducting super collider in Texas, we haven't really had that much to do with it. And I mean, actually, one of the really interesting things about it is uh, the actual data. Like, they, essentially, these detectors are a digital camera that takes pictures of, like, 600 million pictures a second. Mm -hmm. So all that data has to go somewhere. So they've actually had to build, like, a new computing grid in order to actually Just deal with all the data. Just to the data, yeah. Because they're, 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 they're smashing just millions and millions and millions of atoms together to just try to see, like, one or two little reactions. Exactly. So, I mean, that's, they're looking for rarer and rarer particles. I mean, that's kind of what particle physics has been about. Well, that's great. So let's it's talk about that. What is it that they hope to, uh, what do they hope the outcome of the experiment will be? I mean, is, is it ultimately the Higgs boson? Is that their, is that their goal? Right. So the Higgs boson is what people think gives mass to things out in the world. Basically, it's uh, a, a key link in what uh, this is called the standard model of part of physics. Actually, kind of a nice way of describing it. I mean, it's our model for the universe. And it's really the last. This is the, like finding the Higgs boson is really the last piece of the puzzle. I know they've been scientists have been drooling about this forever. They found the quarks. Now they're now they're looking for the like how do we how do we define mass? Exactly. And if they can't do it, they might have to rethink about how the entire puzzle, how they put together the entire puzzle from the very beginning. Well, there's been quite a lot of large pop culture following the uh, the LHC, a lot of it. I mean, it got its own rap song, which I quite enjoyed, from uh, Alpine Cat, did the LHC rap song. It was in Dan Brown's Angels and Demons, and some say even inspired the Dharma logo from Lost. I mean, why do you think there's such a fascination? Well, you know, I mean, it's an atom smasher, right? I mean, we kind of love these things. You build these, like, enormous machines, the biggest well, machines that humans build, in order to look for the smallest particles that exist in right. the universe. So, I mean, I think, at a very basic level, that's, like, kind of fascinating. And the Ghostbusters even carry positron colliders on their backs, too. What's that? I said even the Ghostbusters carried positron colliders on their backs. Right, absolutely, yeah, right, exactly. But I mean, I think it also just shows kind of the immediate savviness of a lot of these uh, big science organizations. I mean, they're spending billions of dollars building these things, and they realize, well, you know, we've got to get out there in the media and do what we're going to do. So the I Large Hadron uh, rap song you're talking about actually was conceived by the staff science writer at CERN. So, I mean, I think it just also shows kind of like Mark Phoenix and the way they use Twitter that of the kind of the science agencies are getting hit with the new technology. Well, I'm just glad that Brittany and uh, Paris could step aside from the press for a minute so we can talk about the LHC. Um, I just want to say the LHC does have skeptics. Some people say that it could create a black hole and destroy us all. I mean, 
Do these claims have any merit whatsoever, or is this just sensation? Is this Y2K all over again? I mean, they really don't. It's like a wormhole. I mean, any kind of serious scientists uh, dismiss any sort of uh, a possibility of anything bad happening. They basically say that cosmic rays that have as much energy as what we're doing in the Large Hadron Collider uh, are going to, you know, hit the Earth all the time. I mean, there's, there's absolutely no possibility that uh, that this is going to cause any problem. Or who even knows what it's like to be in a black hole? We could be stretched in all sorts of directions. We don't know what our perception of time will be. Maybe we'll be in it and not even realize it. So it might even be that bad. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we might love it. All right. Well, listen, thanks so much, Alexis, for keeping us in the loop. Hey, Let's thank go. you, Chris. I thank appreciate. you, Alexis. Let's go over to Hazel, who is about to tell us another way the world could end. Three words. Twitter reading robot. Uh, I mean, it's pretty neat. Um, you know, like, like a wormhole. Uh, I don't know. The way I look at that, look at that and think of that is, okay, so you, you tear apart space and stuff. But, nah, I don't think it would be that bad. I mean, it's just possibly a big old explosion, though. So, I hope everybody's, you know, far away.